Okay, I have a lot of people who are under this uh, belief that because I am a professional chef, I have like this killer kitchen and that you need all of these amazing tools and equipment and space to get shit done. And I'm here today to dispel that because I have downsized my life dramatically. The first downsize came in 2007 and I have never upsized again. So I have always stayed in space that is smaller. I, at another time, will give you a little tour of how I have managed to make my entire life work. But the kitchen space in particular is what concerns a lot of people. So I'm here today to show you some of the things that work and don't work for me and how I have managed to really just pare down to, to brass tacks and make everything move forward in, in a positive way. So I am gonna just grab this for a quick minute we don't want to, um, I don't want to knock over the new laptop. <laughs> so I'm going to move that. And I am going to turn around. Good morning, Jody. Jody with an eye. Nice to see you here. Thank you for um, coming. And I am going to, um, I'm going to, I'm just going to give you a couple things. I am going to turn this around because this is the reality. These glasses are supposed to be non-reflective. Clearly, those bastards lied to me when I bought them. <laughs> reality is, is when you live in a small space, you got to have a light box. So I do have a light box set up to try and cast a good light on everything that we got going on here. So I'm going to start. And if you have any questions, please feel free to jump in and ask them. I'm going to start with my not so great apartment sized fridge. Greens take up a lot of space. Fruit and vegetables take up a lot of space. I eat a lot of them. But, you know, you just got to live with what you got. So I have um, I've figured out ways to make it work for myself, but I do not have a big and fancy uh, fridge. But I make it work. I've got everything I need in there. And, uh, you know, if I have to go to the supermarket a few more times a week, then so be it. I don't have a lot of counter space. So up top, I have my paper towels easily in reach of my stove top. So let's talk a little bit about this first, because this is... A, hellish for anybody who's a professional chef because it's electric, but because I live alone and I don't cook a lot, a ton of food, I have, this setup works for me. This here, like the most amazing thing ever. I found that uh, years ago when I was living in New Orleans, I don't use that side of the stove that often. I usually basically just use these two items. I, most of my cooking does, it happens in these two pans. They don't even go below. I do have storage space below here in my stove, which is nice. But I usually use what I have here. And Janet, there's those pot holders that you made me. I love those. Those make me think of you every time I use them. And they bring good color to my kitchen. And they're up. I use those little removable hooks. They're up on the wall and easy for me to grab with my cast iron skillet because I use it all the time. But this creates another little workspace for me on my stovetop, which is great. And I can remove it if I want to. Thank God that's clean under there. That would have been a nightmare if there was a bunch of shit under there, huh? Anyway, uh, the other great thing I love about this cutting board is it's, it's got some height to it. So when I put it on my kitchen counter, it actually gives me a little bit of extra space. And as a tall girl, it's awesome because I have a tendency to lean over way too much. So that's my stovetop, and I definitely use this towel thing all the time. But over here on the left-hand side, I have my basic work area. These are the only things that I ever keep here. I don't know any chef who doesn't have a bunch of spoons just to grab and taste uh, handy. My silverware is on the other drawer on the other side. So um, I keep a cup here of um, full of spoons. And that, that mug was made by my friend Mark Derby, who's a ceramicist in New Orleans. And it, I cracked it in storage, and I can't drink out of it anymore. But I keep it and use it because it reminds me of him in New Orleans. So it's a, I'm, I'm very uh, attached to things that people make for me. They make me think about them all the time. I love that. I have a very small selection of knives. I don't use a lot. Paring knife, a must, absolutely a must. This is a finely serrated steak knife. 
Um, I use it for small soft items like cherry tomatoes and things of that nature. This is a large serrated knife that I use for strictly tomato cutting. When I make a fine dice, uh, not a dice, but a fine chop of for salsa and things like that, I use that. I've got my six inch chef knife and then my big chef knife. That's it. The ones that get used the most, this one and this one. Two knives. I don't have a knife for everything. Uh, in here is, uh, it says Saratoga water, but it's water that, it's a bottle that I have recycled. It is um, coconut oil. So the coconut oil comes, I will show you because it's very, uh, it's great in the wintertime when it's cold and frozen, but pouring out of a wide mouth container like this is just ridiculous. So I use a funnel to just put it into the, to, to here. When it's uh, liquid, which it is this time of year, it's liquid. And when it's not, during the winter time and the colder months, when it's solid, I have this, which is like a little jelly jar. And I keep my coconut oil in there with the spoon and I just throw it into the, um, into the pan. But right now, this is coconut oil. I've got extra virgin olive oil, apple cider vinegar, salt, and pepper. Again, this is, I do a blog post. I did have a blog post on reusing glass jars. Save your old um, glass jars from your herbs and spices so that you can buy them in bulk much more cheaply and use them in these things. I like this because it's a flip top for the salt, and I don't have to worry about it getting all yucky. So that's what I have here. And I also want, I want to show you what I've got here because we are all under the impression that we need 9 million tools to make shit happen in our kitchen. Not true. I use this. I use this. I use this. And I use this. Pretty much all the other stuff I never touch. We all have drawers full of crap we never, ever, ever use. Ever, ever. Oh, I should say, I use these every now and then too, spatulas. Other than that, I don't have any stuff that I use. So, you know, I've got all this stuff here. It's handy dandy. It's great. But is it realistic? Not so much. No. So that's pretty much everything that I use there. So that's my stove. This is the most highly used item in my kitchen. It is a fine mesh hand strainer. I use it for rinsing things quickly all the time. You know, it's right next to the sink here, so I can rinse, do what I need, bang it on here, let it dry here, hang it up here. Easy peasy. I use it all the time. I've got three different cutting boards that I can grab depending on what I need. This is for keeping hot tea, uh, hot water, or making tea. And um, I actually, what I keep in there is water from over here. We're going to go over here for a second. Don't get dizzy. We're going to go over here for a second because this is where I have space in this small apartment for my, my water. So I don't want to have to keep walking across the kitchen all the time to get the water I need. So what I do is I keep it in here so it's handy dandy. And then if I'm boiling something and I need a little bit more water, which I don't know whether this happens for you a lot of times, like when I boil beets, the water keeps going down. I just heat this up and then I can add hot water to whatever it is that I'm boiling here. It makes it easier. I do not have a dishwasher. Read it and weep, kids. Yes, indeed. I wash everything by hand. The one downfall to this apartment. That Pellegrino bottle is there because occasionally I am a bag recycler and I'm pulling a bag out right now to show you. Sometimes I will you know, just have like a head of lettuce. I'm going to put this down for, wait, let me put, grab this, see if this works. It does. Look at that. I am going to, nope, we'll do it there while I free my hands up. So sometimes I just rinse a bag out and I need somewhere to stand it up to dry off. And that's what that's there for. Yeah, because I'm that sort of gal. Janet doesn't have a dishwasher either. She gets it, right? This, I, this cup drainer, I schlepped back from when I lived in Panama. Oh, my God, I love this thing. It creates much more space in my dish drainer and allows me to just wash and hang my jars and my cups up, upside down. It's got a lot of miles on it, and I really love it. It's a great, great, great thing. 
Uh, this is, I don't, I've got my window closed, but I have a nice view of the house next door. I'm on the second floor, so I love to have a window over my sink. I'm just trying to reduce the glare today so that we don't um, have a problem with that. And then this is my small, pretty much where I do most of my work is here. Um, you can see my Vitamix over there on the right. Sometimes the carafe is there. This thing is there. Sometimes it's not. These are part of my daily routine. Uh, they're, um, this is the one prescription that I do take or, or uh, thyroid medication I take. This is my vitamin D drops. And these are herbal tinctures that go into water every day. These are the, the must-haves for me in the morning, and they stay here until I take them and then they get moved off the counter. So it's just a reminder. This is also another container that I refill my water from behind me. Coffee, yes, I still do coffee. Um, that's my coffee thing and this is just a glass for me to pour this into because I'm always trying to drink water and that's my coffee. This is my uh, vegetable brush that I use all the time and I found this, how, look how perfectly that fits there. I found that little dish at a thrift store for next to nothing. Um, and then I have um, I have dish soap and hand soap, which my friend Marie, who comes over, always laughs. She goes, only a chef has hand soap at the sink. Everybody else is using their dish soap for their hands. So let me show you quickly what I've got in, from a cabinet perspective. Because, again, if you look and see, I've got, very, I've got very few cabinets. So let's see what makes what works and doesn't work for me. So in here, again, over the stove area... I have all my herbs and spices. I don't use a lot of stuff. I have some favorites that I use. Garlic and onion powder, ginger, white pepper, all in recycled things. I love Paul Prudhomme seasonings for when I, when I need a little something, something. I don't have to think. Some crushed red chili, some, you know, just basic stuff. As you can see, I don't have a lot in there. And I buy bulk so that I can have um, fresh stuff. You know, if you buy a jar, a whole size jar of this of, of like say white pepper, I'll never use it. It'll be crap before I get to using it all. So I buy my herbs and spices in bulk so that I can have fresher stuff. Up here is tea and emergency coffee filter. Um, and I, you know, it's this time of year I don't necessarily drink tea. In the winter I do. Up here is, this is where you start hearing angels sing. Oh! my glass jar collection and Megan just signed on. Hello, Megan. She knows I am a glass jar hoe. I have the bigger ones on the right hand side and the smaller ones on the left. I have a glass jar for everything. I love my glass jars. I use them for storage and everything. So, and then up top here, because I'm a tall girl, I can use the top. I use that strainer at least three times a day. Up here, I have some really huge stainless steel bowls. This is just pretty shit. And let me just go in here. This is all dishes. So you can see, again, I don't have a lot of storage space, but I got smart. I have these stackable items here. It'll be crap. <laughs> so true. Um, but these are stackable, right? So I have more space. Everything stacks. The lids go here. I'm not fighting with them all the time. Glasses. And these are my plates. That's it. That's all I got. Bowls and plates. I, nothing fancy. I've got plenty to, to entertain with what I need. And then over here on the other side, unlike most homes, this is pretty much all of my dry goods. <laughs> I do have some more behind me, which I'm going to show you in a few minutes. But up here on the top shelf, I have a half open, half open box of rice pasta, but mostly my nuts and seeds, some more tea stuff. Here is, um, again, just some, my coffee and some basic dry goods, which I have taken from the packaging that they came in and put in, in glass containers. I'm almost out of sugar. I had to borrow this from somebody, from my buddy Keith, who has coffee with me every Thursday. Got to get some more sugar. Pea protein, smoothie stuff. And then this is all smoothie stuff. So here we are again. I come back here to where my Vitamix is. I make my smoothies here in the morning. So right above me are everything I need to put in my smoothies. So I'll show you quickly. I've got, you know, the pea protein, which is, takes up a, I have a, bit, a much bigger, I have a seven pound container under my kitchen sink that I load into this so that it doesn't take up too, too much space. But this is maca powder. This is seaweed, turmeric, uh, moringa, 
cacao, cinnamon, a variety of things that I use in my smoothies. So they're all right here, right above everything that I use. The only other area that you can see is this drawer, which is where I keep my silverware. I use literally three things in this drawer. I use this strainer, I use this vegetable peeler, and I use these scissors. All this other shit is just that. It's just crap. I never use any of this stuff. And I have a great tip for you if you're trying to to thin this drawer out is to go through this drawer and pull out things that you haven't used in the last couple months and then put them in a box and put them under your bed or put them somewhere where you won't use it. If you don't touch it in six months, you don't need it. Get rid of it. We all have way too much kitchen crap than we'll ever use. Down below, I do have a little bit of storage here. I never use. This is my big stuff, my juicer, my, my, salad spinner, whatever. In here, I do use this. This is where I keep some of my plastic stuff that I use. And then I do have some uh, pantry stuff underneath here, but nothing significant. It's a really tiny space. There's probably 10 items in there. This is a regular kitchen space. Never, ever go in this drawer. There's crap in there. I never go in there. And underneath here is where I keep my food processor. So that's that. The other thing I want to show you is this. This is not pretty, but I do have something to hang over it so that I don't look at it. But this is open shelving that I also use here. You'll see my water container and the box underneath that is my dehydrator, which I think I'm going to sell because you know what? I've never, I haven't used it in like three years. I keep thinking I'm going to dehydrate some stuff, but I never do. Um, the other thing is here I have, uh, over here you see the speakers on top. Those are, I will frequently put my laptop up here. And I don't have a television by choice, but sometimes I want to listen to videos and um, what's going on. So I just realized I did not block incoming stuff. Oh my goodness, I'm getting messages. Um, but anyway, I put my laptop up here connected to the speaker. Sometimes I listen to music, listen to inspirational things. I've got, you can see on the bottom here, I do... I'm a little OCD, kids. I, these are my pre-made vitamins that I take every morning. So I do these up and I just grab one of these in the morning so I am ready to roll some stuff that doesn't need refrigerating. I do use these bowls a lot. Again, they're stackable so that I can be efficient with my space. And my box grater, another handy-dandy item in the kitchen. Again, just a handful of some items that are would normally be in kitchen cabinets for folks, some bigger plates. Kaka, backup vitamins, water, more kaka. That's basically how I roll. The other thing I do have here, which I'm going to turn around and show you because this is awesome too. This is a fairly new acquisition. I had a table here for a while that wasn't working as efficiently for me, but this has got two layers on it and wheels. So this is a commercial prep table. And this is the, the bomb. I love this. So I have underneath, I keep, I do use, uh, for most things, I use the water that I buy from the, from the store and I have on the other side. But this is water that's filtered, a Brita filter in case that I want to do anything, but I don't want to use tap water. I have this. These are all the pieces and parts to my juicer, which I never use, can really go underneath the sink into that vast hole of crap over there I never use. But this, is, uh, this area is really where ground central for me. I bought some, some um, let's see, Megan says, for anyone recognizing the jars, Lid. Some of those have come from other people. I don't think Jody's endorsing any particular product. <laughs> Megan is so right. Megan actually is one of my glass jar suppliers. She's my hookup. I don't buy a lot of prepared food, so I have to, I have to source my glass jars from other people. <laughs> Thanks for recognizing that, Megan. Um, below, I've got some these were on sale. It's mango season somewhere and they were 79 cents. So they are out ripening and they will be frozen soon. I've got some avocados. Those were two for a dollar. They're small, but they were two for a dollar at my local food co-op. So I bought a bunch of those and I'll be freezing avocados because I know how to freeze avocados. And if you haven't seen my video yet, I don't know where you've been. I've got other things that don't necessarily need refrigeration, I have got onions, red potato, tomato, garlic. Tomatoes should never be refrigerated until they get to the point where they're too ripe. 
I am a always having ideas and taking notes. So I've got post-its, I've got, I've got pens and stuff in this little thing. And you know, come on, at some point, here, yeah, let's do this. Who doesn't need a microphone to sing in? Oh, my wireless connection went out. Look, it's from Nix. Cause every now and then a girl needs to do a little air guitar in, right? So anyway, I've got that on my, on my kitchen counter. Flip that back around. And these are two vitamins that I ran out of that I need to replace. So they're there so I don't forget. But this is my workspace. I can roll it over here. The awesome thing is, is I can roll it right over here and create a nice little big workspace for myself. So I love that. That's a totally cool thing that I can do. So that's the, that's the um, tour of my kitchen. Pretty much, that's how I roll. The one other thing, oh, there is one thing I did forget to tell you is this. This is, here. so here we are back at my stove top. I, um, this is a much used drawer for me too. Elastics and twist ties. I'd throw them all in here. I'm reusing these things all the time. And I've got an immersion blender in here I use occasionally. And then this is, Oddly enough, I don't have a lot in here, but I use this space a lot. This is my mandolin. These are the two trays that I do my freezing on. And then these are, I'm gonna take one of these out and show you what these is. This is, this came from my, I'm gonna free up my hand quickly. This is what's called a Teflex sheet. And they came with my dehydrator. They're sort of like a silicone sheet. And I use them in place of things in cold. Like I will put this down on a cookie sheet and put all my fruits that I'm freezing on them. I'll show you. And it's reusable. You just wash it and reuse it. And I love it. So I just basically put it on here. And I anything that I'm going to freeze in the freezer, I cut up and put on here. And then I can just rewash it. And then I, that way I'm not using foil, which is really bad for you. Aluminum get away from the aluminum foil and plastic. Um, the, the thin, the thin like film plastic is not good for you either. So that's my tip for that. And I'm going to turn around. Has anybody got any questions for me? What's your questions? Anybody got any questions? I am going to turn this annoying light off and see if that helps now that I don't need it to show you the kitchen and see if that helps a little bit with Ooh, yeah, a little less offensive. I uh, so everybody has is under this impression that us chefs have these big fancy pantsy kitchens, and I have really found that downsizing and having less makes things much more efficient for me. I'm moving things, you know. When you have a lot of crap you're not using, you just they're in the way, and you're moving them constantly as you're trying to to move forward and get shit done. And you you know if you're not using it, get rid of it. And I and I and I love the idea of and, and this can take place anywhere in your house. The suggestion that I had for the junk drawer that you have with all the equipment in it. If you're not using it, put it in a box, put it away somewhere for six months. If you don't need those things in there, just drop them off at the thrift store. We all have way more crap than we need. We think we need it. We don't need it. But I have really been able to make this space work for me in, in ways that I never believed possible. And so smaller is better when it comes to a lot of things. And for me, um, it's just been killer. So I, at some point in the not too distant future, I don't want to take up too much of your time today, but in the not too distant future, I'm going to show you the rest of the space that I live in. I live in a studio apartment happily. I would live in this place for the rest of my life if it had a dishwasher. I have really made it work. And, and when you have less, it makes life a lot easier to free up a lot of, of your time and your space and your energy. Not for everybody, but for those who are considering making the move, I would recommend it. And it seems no matter what I do from a video perspective, there's always this nasty air intake valve behind me. <laughs> so not pretty. Do I have a favorite cookware manufacturer? Pots, pans, yes, two. Lodge cast iron, absolutely love their products. And any, I don't necessarily have a manufacturer of pans that I like, but I am gonna show you this one. This is a stainless steel always, right? Stainless steel always. This is made by Culinary Comforts. It's a great pan. It's got a thick, you can see the thick reinbuilt heat portion on the bottom of it so it heats evenly. But I gotta tell you, the handle on it is for shit. 
It is the worst grip ever. Every time I grab it, I feel like I am going to drop it. So you, what I recommend is that you find a good quality stainless steel heavy pan that's got one of these built into the bottom of it. And you'll know it's just like a, a disc that heats more evenly. Um, I would recommend that. But you've got to feel the pan. You've got to pick the pan up in your hand and be like, wow, that feels really good for me. The reason I don't like this, let me get it over this so that you can see, is that the handle is rounded. So it has a tendency to slip in my grip. Unlike, I'm gonna pull this up just so that you can see the difference. On my, on my cast iron skillet, see how that's flat? When I grab it, I don't feel like it's gonna slip in my hands. So, you know, the grip, the pan may be awesome and it looks great, but if you grab it and it doesn't feel good, you definitely don't want to, um, you don't want to buy it. Janet says, Miss Sonia on the beach in the grill, Jamaica made the most amazing patties rolling the dough out on a wine bottle in her kitchen. Absolutely, Janet. You're welcome, Ma Megan. I totally agree. Flip this around again. Absolutely, Janet. I've used glasses many times, a pint glass, when I've been desperate trying to roll things out. It really, it, it's, resourcefulness is one of the things that I am most proud of. I can really create solutions for myself quickly and easily. And any of these glass, many of these glass jars that I have up here, let's like this one in particular would be perfect for rolling out on any surface. So yeah, I'm totally on board with that, Janet. Thanks for bringing that tip to our attention. That's a, a really awesome tip. And you can, get, you, you, know, you can get resourceful in your kitchen when you do need things to, to make it work. Don't be afraid to just try stuff. But I find that for me, you know, I keep a lot of stuff on the counter in front of me here, you know, ripening things out. One of the things a lot of people don't know is that there's a lot of food, if, if it's not ready to eat when you come home, Oh, look at that hot mess over there. I can't wait. I'm going to have take a jackhammer to that thing. I hate it so much. Sorry, I digress. When you come home from the market, everything should not go into your... There are many things that still need time to ripen. And so if, you, if I had put these mangoes and these avocados in the fridge as soon as I came home, then they would never reach their, their best quality. So that's a big deal for me anyway, I want my food to be good. So, you know, it's a constant, you put it out and feel it. And is it, is it, does it feel right? Is it ripe? The great thing about avocados is when they do become ripe, you can just put them in the fridge. As soon as they start getting soft, put them in the fridge and they're good for another week in the fridge. So when you stop, when you take them from the counter to the fridge, you stop the ripening process and maintain them where they are so that you will get more longevity out of the product. Uh, so many people, I was surprised when I started going to in makeovers in people's kitchens, I was really surprised at how many people didn't know that things need to stay out on the kitchen counter to ripen. And so, and onions don't need to be in the fridge. Garlic doesn't need to be in the fridge. Look in your supermarket at where they store things. If you notice the onions and the garlics and the sweet potatoes and the potatoes, they're not along the refrigerated section of the supermarket. So that's another tip for you. Generally, they are in, you know, off the refrigerated wall areas of the supermarkets, and they don't necessarily need to be kept in refrigeration. So if you're not sure about what should or shouldn't be in your fridge, take a peek at your supermarket and they'll let you know just by where they place it. So any other questions? Dishwashers are overrated, Jody says. I don't know, girlfriend. I, have a, I do have a friend who I visited who lives down in Key West and she's got two, two, count them, two Bosch dishwashers. Oh, lordy. Pretty awesome. But my fantasy is they have these dishwashers um, when I had my restaurant that have 90 second cycles and they're like five grand. They're not cheap. But you put them in and they, you know, they've got to be wiped off. They don't wash dishes. They sanitize. But you give them a quick rinse and you put them in there and you can just put it in. It's a 90 second cycle. It's out there sanitized. And I just like to work and rework and work and rework from that, just that group of dishes that I'm working on. I always enjoyed doing that. So thank you all for coming. I appreciate uh, that you're here, and I wanted to show you how I make it work. I will be here every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock, so please either put in the comment section below what you'd like to see me talk about on, mon on Sunday mornings or send me a note. I'm happy to try and accommodate you to the best of my ability. Uh, 
Uh, I'm working on that. I'm working on the um thing. I'm working on the um thing. <laughs> anyway, off I go. I got to work today. I got a J-O-B to do. Uh, so thanks for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you here again next Sunday. Thanks. Bye. Bye.